So if you use Go, you probably know channels. Uh, if you ever wonder what they are, they're just structs with a mutex in them. That is a runtime mutex, but behaves very similarly to the sync mutex you're used to. So if you wonder what that is, that's two int. That's it. End of the talk. Good. Um, if you wonder how does the mutex work and what it ensures you, you're probably used to know about the first thing mutexes do, but not the second one. First one is that they ensure critical sections. So you know that inside the yellow lines, you're the only one executing. The one thing that is usually overlooked is that they also give you a grant that everything that happens inside the critical section is propagated. So if you change a variable in there, in your cache, and then you unlock, all the other caches are going to be able to read it with no problems. And the way they do it is simple. Let's take this simple example of code. I declare a variable in one thread, I increment it, in the other thread, I print it. There are two problems. When I print it, I do a fetch. The compiler might decide to reorder it. I mean, fetching memory is easy, so let's just pull it up before we do the print. Then I need that we end up fetching A before it's incremented. Not good. And the other thing is that even if we do it after it's incremented, the cache might decide to just serve us the old value, which is not good either. The way you could address this is to use atomics. So every time you store something in an atomical way, you emit a memory barrier. And every time you read something from memory in an atomical way, you, you emit a read barrier. Reads cannot float upwards uh, from a read barrier, and writes cannot float downwards, nor for the compiler, nor for the hardware, which means that if you have a write barrier after a write and a read barrier before a read, you're safe. Changes are, are going to be propagated. And this is exactly what the mutex does. Since the mutex doesn't know if you're going to store or read values, what it does is emits both uh, barriers with a compare and swap and atomic add operations. Those two operations uh, are compare and exchange, or add and do something else. They both need to read and either increment or swap a variable and then write it back. And since it's both read and write, those are two barriers, which means that you are good to go. And that is the entire hot code of a mutex in Go. And this is one of the reasons you shouldn't use atomics, because if you lock and acquire and unlock the mutex, that's, gonna what you, uh, that's what you're going to do. Just compare and add. And mutexes don't just do that. So if you try to compare an exchange and you can't because someone else is holding the mutex, it spins for a while and retries, like, did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get it? And if it doesn't for a while, it goes into starvation mode. And all of that is done in a log-free, very efficient way that grants fairness. And if you want to really properly go fast in Go, and you need to have locks and a central state, the best way you can do that is to either split it as much as you can, so synchronize it not very often and keep some partial states, um, short and critical sections. So between a lock and an unlock, you can make it faster by just making it smaller. And don't use atomics. If you balance your mutexes correctly, the atomics are going to just be there and use the right way. And the race detector is going to work. If you try to do it yourself, you're alone. And atomics are very tricky and very easy to get wrong. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me on Twitter. That's it. Thanks.